Hi, yeah. good morning everybody. I'm very happy to be here. I've joined Google about eight months ago and I was really excited to join this team. I, a few years back as an engineering manager, I, I thought that the best thing, you know, whenever time we needed to choose a technology, we preferred to use open source. And the reason is that we didn't want to be locked in to anything, we didn't want to discover two years uh, into our journey that we are missing a feature. Uh, and also it increases the credibility of the technology. As an engineering manager, I, I like being close to the user. This means that we can get feedback from users and we know what's going on and how they are using it. Uh, definitely working on open source technology is the best way to get it. Uh, luckily, I got the opportunity to join this community. So let's talk about Kubernetes. Yes, it's a very, very successful project. How do we know that? Uh, first of all, it's one of the top projects on GitHub. Uh, we know it based on uh, amount of stars, for example. Uh, there are over 33,000 projects, external projects, dependent on Kubernetes, right? We kept hearing about the extendability and the community. We care about it a lot and we invest a lot in that. To name a few are OpenShift, Paz, and Aprenda, and we have projects like Helm and Compose specifically helping Kubernetes community uh, to make things easier. We have 170 meetup groups around the world. That's a lot. It means that if you are on vacation, for example, you can definitely crash on a local meetup and learn something new. But this is not just that, right? It means that it's easy to hire people which are experts in Kubernetes and they know the technology. And this is something important when you are making a choice uh, of what platform to use. We had 5,000 commits added into 1.4. It's a three month release. And this adds up to 35,000 commits when the project started. That's a lot, that's big, right? Uh, when we had the birthday of Kubernetes, someone did the math and figured it's about 230 engineers years just in Kubernetes. Okay, so the technology is great, right? In the next couple of days, you're gonna talk about and hear about new features and how you, people are using Kubernetes and how it makes everything better in this world. We think that it's not just a technology. We think that what makes it special is the community that builds the technology. So let me introduce you to the community. This is an interesting slide. Just in the last couple of weeks when I was preparing this deck, I had to change the numbers and bring them up. Right now we have 950 contributors on GitHub. Uh, this is, uh, we had 350 new contributors just in this year. We have people working in 15 time zones around the world on Kubernetes. Even if you eliminate uh, daylight saving, it's a lot. We have people in the US, in China, in India, in Germany, in UK, and I'm sure I'm forgetting some, some other countries. Uh, it's a really diverse com uh, community. When building such a product or a solution like Kubernetes, you need more than just engineers, right? So our community has tech writers, right? We heard Dan saying uh, about the documentation. So we have several uh, dedicated technical writers. We have product marketing, product management, program managers. Uh, we have managers <laughs> in our community and different kind of roles that helps us make it successful. And also the community is really engaged. So there was a, an analysis with BigQuery based on GitHub issues and we saw that the uh, Kubernetes community is the most engaged one. And who are the people, right? So we keep talking, who are those 950 people? This is how it looked back in 2014. When we started the project, you can see the majority were Googlers, right? People experienced with uh, writing uh, distributed systems and the, major and the rest was uh, divided between independent contributors and Red Hat. Now this was also surprising to me when I looked on how it looks today. This is from the last couple of months. And I think this is amazing. Yes, I think. <laughs> so Google today is only 46% out of the commits. The next majority are independent contributors. 
Uh, to name one, so here in the audience, for example, we have the, young, the youngest com uh, maintainer in the Kubernetes community. Uh, Lucas is a high school student from Finland, and he started working on Kubernetes <laughs> by playing on uh, Raspberry Pis and Kubernetes. That's how he started, and we're really happy to have him here. Now, one might think that this is because Google is now no longer investing in Kubernetes. <laughs> So I can promise you that wouldn't be the case and I wouldn't be standing here today. We have been increasing more and more our investment. Luckily, the community is just growing so much faster than we do. When I presented that slide to someone from the community, he told me, make sure they understand. This is not companies uh, working on Kubernetes. This is people working on Kubernetes. This is not just our day job. This is what we do for fun. This is what we enjoy doing, and this is what's special about this community. So how do we make it work? How do we make sure the community really works together as one, uh, being open for new ideas? We think there are three things that are special uh, about the community. The first thing is the special interest groups. The second is the value of transparency. We keep hearing it from previous uh, sessions, right? That is something that we are demonstrating in our community. And the last thing is how we, as a community, learn together. So what are SIGs? Everything in Kubernetes community is operating around SIGs. Uh, SIGs are a group of people working on a specific area together. They decide what features they want to work on. Uh, they discuss roadmap, strategy. Uh, they triage issues towards the release. They make decisions. That's the most important thing. When a community is so big, we have to grow leadership and distribute it. I've chosen two SIGs to introduce to you. Uh, what's special about them? They, they care about you, the users. Uh, the first one is the Cluster Lifecycle SIG. Uh, it's led by Luke. They meet every Tuesday at 9 a.m. And their charter was to make it easy to spin off a new cluster, right? But not just for newcomers to Kubernetes, but also for experts. And they wanted to make sure that whatever they do, it is portable, so you can use it on every platform, right? One of the advantages of Kubernetes. They came up with KubeADM in 1.4. And what's cool about their work, if you'll go and look on the notes from their meetings, is that they just don't, don't just care about the KubeADM, their new solution. They are also investing of how to converge all the different solutions that are out, out there right now in the community. They want to make sure that we provide a choice, but also we don't confuse you, right, of what uh, the right tool for you to choose. The second SIG is the UI SIG. Uh, it's led by Dan and Piotr. Uh, they meet every Wednesday at 4 uh, p.m. Central Eastern Time, right? So if you are from Europe, it's probably a, a better SIG to join. And they wanted to make sure that users can do their job, right? So what are users doing? Last year in KubeCon, there was a user survey that they did, and based on the result, they found out what you care about, that you want to know how to do troubleshooting, for example. And when they build the new features of the dashboard, they thought about that. They thought about the users. Uh, they were working with usability experts, for example, and graphic designers to make sure the solution is the best out there. Uh, this is a great thing to say, uh, great job, uh, UI. I think this is what you, uh, what you made was really amazing. And there is a great session about it uh, in the next couple of days. Keeping two SIGs aligned is easy, right? We just need to make sure that Luke talked to Dan and Piotr, and we are good. But we have 22 SIGs, uh, and we have more SIGs coming up. It's important to mention that SIGs in the Kubernetes community don't map to a different repo. It means that everything needs to work together as one project. It means that everybody needs to play nicely with others, right? Uh, they have to talk together. So how do we make sure uh, that everything is, uh, works as one? That leads to the value of transparency. Why transparency is important for us? First of all, we want to make sure that you are informed of decisions and things that are happening in the community. It also gives you the tools to be uh, to act on that, right? To act on the information. And also it helps to onboard new members. 
So we saw before that uh, the community is really at the top with uh, uh, having, making comments on issues, right? And why is that? Everything we discuss is documented on the GitHub issues. Every functional decision, everything you considered, every alternative we considered. So if you are newcomer to the community and you want to ask, like, why didn't you choose that? Or did you think about that? Before you do that, go into the issues and make sure that you don't, we didn't already consider that as a community. An important tool we have to make sure all the SIGs are aligned are the features repository. So all, every SIG will create items in that repository and we'll make sure that they are transparent about their work and their pro progress. And we have a special working group, our PM working group. They are responsible to review all the features there and make sure that everything makes sense and it provides a comprehensive platform for you to use and that we don't have overlapping or things that will confuse you uh, later on. The feature repository is also for you. Uh, if you want to know what's coming up in 1.5 and you can't wait, I can understand that, just go to GitHub, look in our feature repository. Everything is there. The functionality, whether documentation is ready or not, maybe it's an opportunity to help us with that. Uh, and this is a really uh, important tool. But this is not enough, right? How can someone actually work with all this information? It can be overwhelming. Uh, this is why we have the community meetups. Every Thursday, 10 a.m., uh, we meet together over a, a video conference call and we see Sarah. Sarah is our community manager. I'm pretty sure she's here somewhere. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> And it's always a nice thing to see, right? Because she will greet us and she will say good morning and good afternoon and good evening. And we'll celebrate everything that's happening in the community. Uh, we will start with a demo, usually from someone from the community showing a new product or a new integration. Uh, and then we will have one of the SIGs, for example, demonstrating a new feature. And then we'll talk. We always have things to talk about. Uh, if it's a new release or a new feature or maybe what's core and what's not core from the Kubernetes project. And it's a really fun event uh, to be part of. Other things that we demonstrate transparency are the burn down meetings. We take it really seriously, uh, the responsibility for your productions. So it means that when we release something, we want to make sure that we put the quality bar really high. So we make a community decision when we are ready to release something. We will triage issues together. When there is something that is not working, we'll make sure that people are checking it on bare metal, probably from Red Hat, and then we'll have maybe Justin working on AWS, and people from uh, our team testing it on GCP. We, we want to make sure it works, it works for you. Uh, but we don't know everything, and I would lie if I would say it's easy, uh, to manage such a big community. And we make mistakes. So the important thing is that community, we're engaged to learn together and to improve. And we are really engaged in investing a lot of time. So this is a short GIF from our latest retrospective. You might say, retrospective, what's new about that? We do retrospectives all the time. When was the last time you did retrospective with strangers? With people, you don't actually only know their GitHub handler, right? And now you need to come up and say, this is what went well, but this is where we made mistakes. I love our community retrospectives. Uh, the first one, we scheduled for one hour. We had many things to discuss. It ended up as a two-hour session. Uh, but luckily, when we looked back in the next retrospective, we saw that eight out of 10 items we identified of things that we want to get better at we're actually improving. We also do post-mortems, you know, if there is a specific incident. Uh, and we build on our own productivity tools. We want to make sure that as the community grows, the velocity stays really high and everybody can feel productive. Everything that I talk about is either available on YouTube or on GitHub, so everything is open and publicly shared. So if there is one thing I want you to remember, and probably from this whole conference you hear about it, you will hear about it a lot, 
is that Kubernetes, it's not just an open source technology. It's an open community. Kubernetes make it, it makes it easier to run software. We as a community make it easier to run software on top of Kubernetes. When I came up and made this slide, originally I had two parts of it, right? So the top one was companies contributing to Kubernetes, and the lower part was about users uh, using Kubernetes. But this is not the case with our community, right? We just heard Sam from Box, and, and they've, been sharing, they've been contributing code to the project when we started. Everybody are doing both, right? And that's something that is very important for us. So if you as users want to contribute back to the community, it can be with code, it can be by arranging meetups, it can be by sharing your experience and sharing some best practices within the community. So now prob probably everybody are thinking, how can I join this fun place to work at? And it is fun. I love our community. So definitely, we would like you to join us. Uh, we want to hear more from you. We want to get feedback. We want to learn from your experience. Uh, and even with that, we want to get better. So we will be uh, introducing a new onboarding program. Uh, this will be with the help of Intel, what we call Class Zero. So anyone who is interested of becoming a contributor on GitHub, on Kubernetes, is welcome to go to that form and just sign up, and we will contact you and help you to do your first steps on Kubernetes. Thank you. <laughs>